I'm Lynn Smith, and welcome to Bigfoot Case Files. Bigfoot Encounter Stories from New England. The swamps around Hockamock in southeastern Massachusetts have been rumored to be haunted by an array of spirits since Indian times, including several sightings of a shaggy ape man. In 1978, Joe DeAndrade of nearby Bridgewater said he was standing by a pond on the edge of the swamp known as Clay Banks when something extraordinary happened. He suddenly had an urge to turn around, and there, off to the right, maybe 200 yards away, there was this, well, I don't know what it was. It was a creature that was all brown and hairy, like a big, apish, and man-thing. It was making its way for the woods, but I didn't stick around to watch where it was going. I ran for the street. DeAndrade, a former security guard, said the creature was walking slowly, like Frankenstein, into the brush. In the rural, secluded town of West Haven, Vermont, which borders the Bigfoot hotspot of Whitehall, New York, a family was fishing in the summer of 1979 at the East Bay River, when they startled a large, hairy creature. A human-like head was reportedly seen peering over some bushes by the entire family. The figure turned and went eastward as the man yelled. He claimed that as it moved, the head would occasionally peek out from the top of the bush cover. It was running slumped over, according to him. A week later, close to the same location, they reported another similar event. This time the man had a gun with him, but he refrained from pulling the trigger. John Barker, a fur trapper from West Bridgewater in southeast Massachusetts, was setting muskrat traps along a river in the Hockamock Swamp on a freezing winter night in 1983. A tremendous smashing sound of someone running through the adjacent woods appeared out of nowhere. Then he noticed it. A large, hairy animal splashed into the river and came within a few yards of his canoe. He claimed that it smelled musty and skunk-like. Despite spending more than three decades trapping in the area, it was his only contact with the creature. A middle-aged couple who were traveling slowly on a country road had an amazing meeting in March 1983 in the farming village of Tinmouth in east-central Vermont. The man had a glimpse of what appeared to be a huge figure traveling quickly up a low rocky ridge. The creature was incredibly agile, he said. He was traveling so swiftly toward the ridge's highest point among the boulders that I couldn't believe it. He abruptly stopped and turned to face my wife and me, leaving us both speechless. He appeared much bigger than any man either of us had ever seen, with arms that were much longer than those of a typical man. The figure then stood there for a while before finally appearing to glance directly at them. In an effort to make sense of what he was witnessing, he realized that it might be a prankster. But following what happened next, he quickly ruled it out. The creature suddenly extended his enormous arms above his head and waved them repeatedly before turning and moving with the agility of a gymnast along the crest. I then had no doubt that this individual was not an ordinary man. The thing then quickly vanished over the ridge's backside. Two Pittsfield, Massachusetts residents came into the Berkshire Eagles office on August 20th, 1983, to tell an unusual encounter that had occurred on October Mountain the night before. Eric Durant, 18, and Frederick Perry, 22, claimed to have been at a picnic with two friends when they heard weird noises at 10 p.m. By midnight, their curiosity had finally got the better of them, and they made the decision to go and locate the source. They claimed they could make out the outline of a large creature 50 yards ahead on the trail, 100 yards from their camp. The thing in the bushes was made visible by their car's headlights. It had weird glowing eyes, dark brown hair, and the height of about 6 to 7 feet. They were positive it wasn't a bear because it was standing on two legs, as both men noted. It immediately disappeared as Perry got out of the car and moved toward it. He remarked, Whatever it was, it didn't look like it was going to harm you, despite the creature's size and the fact he had encountered it in the dark woods. The following day, Perry and a buddy returned to the location around midday and claimed to have seen the monster moving very quickly through the trees while swinging its arms. In east-central Vermont in 1984, there were a lot of close calls. James Guyette was delivering bundles of newspapers as part of his morning routine in April in Bellows Falls in Windsor County. It was 5.30 in the morning. 
He was traveling along Route 91, close to the Heartland Dam, when a light rain began to fall. He was then abruptly shocked by a large animal man. The monster, according to him, was hair-covered and approached up to the bank near the creek, going swiftly along the road at an angle, maybe a hundred yards away. Tall and lanky, with long arms swinging as he moved. In the hopes that it might come back, Gayat pulled off to the side of the road and attempted to make sense of what he had just seen. The incident left a lasting impression on him. Later, as he was telling his wife about the experience, he started crying. A lifelong hunter from Chittenden, Vermont, had a terrifying encounter one night in the spring of 1984, which he later related to fellow resident and Bigfoot researcher Ted Pratt. The man asked to remain unidentified. The story, as given by Pratt, goes like this. Last spring, a man who won't disclose his name woke up in the middle of the night to some really loud screaming at his back door. He truly isn't terrified of anything, but he told me, I was unable to get out of bed. A terrible cry erupted. Five to seven seconds passed during it. His cellar door was then heard to be torn from its hinges. His daughter, who resides nearby, also heard the cry. One handprint and one footprint were all that we could find as we combed the area. If this is the case, at the very least in the state of Vermont, this must be the first act of violence that we have ever witnessed. Bruce and Bernard Bateau wrote down an occurrence that happened in Hubbardton, Rutland County, Vermont, in late May or early June. At 3.30 in the morning, Bruce was laying in bed when he heard a high-pitched screech. He claimed that because of the tone. It was almost like a whistle. In the vicinity of a dense cluster of pine trees, close to where the noises had originated, Bruce discovered a trail of enormous nude footprints the next day. The event happened not far from Monument Hill Road. Additionally, he detected a strong musty, musky smell that reminded him of rotting perfume and gave him an odd feeling. A family of four saw a large man-like creature on Route 2 in Colchester in November 1984. The incident happened as the father was making his way from Milton, Vermont, to their house in Winooski, which is near Burlington. Around midnight, a significant snowstorm hit the region. Just then, a tall creature crossed the road abruptly, started to make its way up a slope, then stopped and turned to face the car. The mother described the monster as having one foot on a wire fence holding the wire down with its arm as it turned to face them. It had long white fur with dirty yellow streaks and amber-yellow eyes that looked like warning lights. The creature, according to the witness, was at least ten feet tall and had very long arms. She claimed that all save the cheeks and the area around the eyes were covered with what looked to be fur on its face. Their two girls began to scream when the father slowed down to get a better look, and the wife freaked out, so he drove off. She claimed that she simply kept on thinking about its eyes. The hamlet of Clarendon Flats in Rutland County saw a snowy evening on March 4, 1985. When Dorothy Mason recalled, she and her son Jeff were remaining warm in their home. I was checking the amount of snow that had fallen from the window. About 30 feet from the glass, I just happened to observe some really strange and big tracks. They hurriedly ran outside to measure the tracks before the snow buried them after she contacted her son. The distance between the tracks was 6 feet and they measured 16 inches long by 5 inches wide. In addition to having a definite big toe and three little ones that we could see very clearly, and probably one other, Dorothy added the prints appeared to be human. The path crossed the lawn and headed westward toward West Rutland and the mountains. A hairy figure was visible on the shore in June 1985 when two men were taking it easy and fishing on Foster Pond in Peacham, Caledonia County, Vermont. They steered the boat to get a closer look, since they believed they were seeing one and possibly two bears. The bear suddenly rose up, began to walk like a person, then burst into a run as it ran into a cedar swamp. The shocked duo observed that the creature's feet soles were lighter in color than the rest of it. The evening of September 20th, 1985, on a remote property in West Rutland, saw occurrences that would garner media attention. It happened at Ed and Teresa Davis's house on Old Route 4A, a meandering, uneven road that connects Castleton with West Rutland. Frank Fron Grabowski III, 
and Bob Davis were guests of the Davises. At about 8.30 in the evening, Fron, who was a student at West Rutland High School in the 8th grade, and his friend Bob were sitting on the porch. They then heard strange noises and decided to walk up the dirt road to investigate. They noticed a gorilla-like monster walking toward them as they climbed a gravel path to investigate the sounds. He had the sensation that as long as he didn't approach the creature, it wouldn't hurt him. Bob stated, I noticed a black figure as I was moving along the road. It ran like a human and was taller than me. When the pair started hurling stones at the creature, they claimed that it turned and fled. According to Bob, the creature was seven feet tall and had black skin. Al, Bob's brother, circled behind the house to see who was tricking them. He set himself up on the ledge along the gravel. He set himself up. He set himself up on the. He set himself up on a ledge along the gravel road where the thing was moving and prepared to seize it. However, he changed his mind when he saw it, realizing it was not a human being. The way the shoulders were being twisted, he claimed, made it appear humongous in the shoulders. God, to me, it looked like it had a monkey run to it, like a long stride. He claimed that the creature's gassy or marshy stench made him queasy. He referred to it as wicked and unreal, among other adjectives. The hard gravel road where the beast was spotted had several big tracks pressed into it. Word of the incident spread throughout the school, and two West Rutland teachers, Mel Loomis and Linda Barker, contacted anthropologist Dr. Cook, who rushed right away to the scene and made plaster casts of the prints. The tracks were 7 inches wide by 14 inches long. Cook calculated the weight as 400 pounds, using the dented gravel as evidence. One Wednesday night around 6.30 p.m., two boys were playing near the Davises' home when one of them noticed a Bigfoot standing 30 feet away. This was in mid-November, approximately two months after the West Rutland encounter. Instinctively, the witness, who was holding a BB gun at the moment, fired it in the direction of the creature before running for the protection of the house. November 21st, the school bus made a U-turn in a nearby parking lot as it was collecting up pupils the following morning. Gary and Donna St. Lawrence, two students, among others, noticed a large, black, hairy thing in a field. Thanks for listening. I think you might find this video of interest as well. If you've had an encounter or sighting of a Sasquatch and would like your story told here, please email me, Lynn Smith, at bigfootcasefiles at mail.com. I'm looking forward to hearing from you.